What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Now ever since I saw the first prototypes for these bad boys I was really excited, mostly because I like the more realistic design. One of the more unique things about Robotech in general is that it took on a multi-generational storyline. Now granted, I'll be the first to admit that there are several continuity issues among the three generations. And the reason for this is pretty obvious, they were each individual shows that were all lumped together for an 85 episode space opera, so to speak. Now, one of the reasons that they had to do this was to satisfy the requirements to be on the air for American audiences. Essentially, they needed a padded out runtime. Now in North America, they were known simply as the Macross Saga, the Robotech Masters, and the New Generation. In Japan, it was known as Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, Super Dimensional Cavalry Southern Cross, and one of my personal favorites, Genesis Climber Moss Pita. So today we're going to be taking a look at a few pieces from the third Robotech War, the war with the Invid, and we're going to be reviewing the VR052F 112 scale variable type stick, also known as Scott Bernard. Let's take a closer look. Now, there have been several companies that have tried to do the ride armors or the cyclones justice, and most notably, there have been the Tonami versions, which are masterpiece versions, and the Mega House versions, which are a little bit smaller. And I think that these cyclones, or ride armors, are probably a hybrid of the two. I also have to admit, because I own the masterpiece cyclones, that I was a little bit worried about the scale here. But when you take them out of the box, you'll be pleasantly surprised at their size. Now, one of the controversies also is definitely in the head sculpt. Now, it looks nice. I have to admit, I love the design here, but I know that there's going to be a little bit controversy with the visor, mostly because you can't see through it, and most notably is the fact that it has some etching so it looks like a Spartan from the Halo series, more specifically, a meal. But if you can get past that initial nitpicking, you have to admit, it looks really cool. And one of the other things that really impressed me about the armor itself is definitely the color palette. Now, it seems like it's a lot more functional in battle in terms of what they did and the different shades of green that they used. It actually looks pretty cool. Most of the other ride armors that I've seen or cyclones that I've seen in terms of the armor, they have been this very like white kind of standout-ish color. The lighter colors here are actually a muted gray, which I think makes a lot more sense. The other aspect of this figure that was very impressive is the overall dimensions and the proportions. In other figures, I've either seen the feet that are too skinny or they're too big. Here, they think they had a nice in-between and it does look proportionate to the rest of the figure. One minor issue I did have with this version is how it actually fits on the motorcycle. Now there are some pegs that you can put at the back of the motorcycle in order for you to rest the legs on, but they don't fit that well. I finally just gave up and I just put it so that it looked kind of natural. One good thing about it though, I love where the feet are underneath. They have this nice tread there, the texture looks great, and it gives it a lot of heft, it looks cool. Now this figure is a little bit light on accessories and I'll talk about that in a minute, but one of the ones that it does come with is the iconic beam rifle. Now it's really cool, and one of the things that I really like about it, apart from being incredibly detailed, is that it can fold up in several places so that you can attach it to the side of the motorcycle, which is awesome. And speaking of the motorcycle or cyclone, yes, I was raised in North America, that's how I know it. This thing is absolutely stunning, guys. It is beautiful. I mean, I thought I was impressed with the masterpiece cyclones, but this thing is on a whole nother level. There are some metal parts on there, but mostly the incredible detail is awesome. Guys, this thing is really nice. And you know what? It kind of has to be, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm sorry to report guys, there is no sticker sheet here, or at least none that I found. And the worst thing about it is that the actual display on this motorcycle is non-existent. It's not there. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything in terms of making one or painting one or giving you a sticker for it. So I don't know why they did this or why they cheaped out on this, but it's horrible, especially at this price point. Now, there are some really cool details, which again, perplexes me. I don't know why they did this detail. They didn't put a simple kind of thing so that you have some kind of sensors. But you do have the brake, you do have the start button, which looks really cool, and also the accelerator. I mean, that level of detail is really cool, which again, I mean, boggles the mind why the hell they wouldn't put a display on there. But here's the deal, guys. There's enough detail that it makes up for the fact that you don't actually have a display sensor within the motorcycle. I mean, just take a look at the front fascia of this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. Not only are the lights, the turning signals really freaking detailed, but just look at the lights, guys. That is amazing. And again, the design and style here is really cool because you think 
that this would actually be something that people would be driving on the street, which is awesome. Now, this incredible attention to detail also extends to the rest of the cyclone. It's not just limited to the upper part of the fascia. If you look, there are actual rubber tires here, and what I definitely love about this is that guard. That looks awesome. The fact that it has holes drilled in it looks really cool, guys. It looks very industrial, and that, I mean, that, for me, that just sold the piece. Not to mention that the rockets are very bulky looking. I especially love the way that they colored it. It looks hefty as hell. And this is something that I've wanted to see in a cyclone for a very long time. And overall, guys, this is a great sculpt. One of the other impressive aspects of this figure is definitely in some of the washes that they used. Not to mention some of the dry brushing, especially here on the exhaust point. I mean, that looks really well done. And I also love that they have that big old 21 symbolizing the Mars division, which Scott Bernard is a part of. Of course, according to the North American version. Now, fortunately, I was sent two of these so that I can show you what it looks like with the actual motorcycle and when the rider actually transforms the cyclone armor. Now if you thought this thing looked good in the motorcycle version, wait until you see when it's fully transformed. This is gorgeous. And let me tell you guys, we have come a long way in terms of the cyclone technology. Everything here fits very flush, it's not flimsy, things don't just pop off, and mostly because they're on a ball joint system so they can take a little bit more stress. Although guys, don't force anything because you might break it. Fortunately, the proportions and the dimensions, again, even in the Cyclone fully transformed version, look really great, guys. I also like the fact, and thank God for this, is that transformation is pretty straightforward. They give you this nice little booklet with very clear instructions on how to transform it. As a matter of fact, they give you different colorations so you don't screw it up. So I thought that was a refreshing change. Stylistically, I also really love what they did with the base here. It's actually very simple, but it makes a huge statement. If you recall from the opening montage of the original series, you see the Cyclones kind of riding on a grid pattern. That's exactly what they tried to replicate here and they did an amazing job. It looks really great, guys. Now the base also comes with this attachment that you can stick right underneath the figure in order to hold it up and believe me guys you are going to need it. Now the only drawback to this figure and the way that you transform it to be anime accurate it actually makes it a little bit unbalanced. So in order for you to display this piece really nice you are going to have to use the actual appendage. And it is what it is guys. I also have to mention that it looks like the appendage is a little bit flimsy so you may not want to put it in flight or jumping. As I mentioned before, this figure comes with few accessories and this is essentially all you get. Although you get a face inside the visor when you lift it up, you also get an alternate head which is Stick or Scott Bernard. Overall, it's a nice representation of him and it actually reminds me of the Figma figures. Now, you also get six additional hands for various poses, but there's not too much articulation on this figure so you're only really getting hands to actually ride the motorcycle or hold the weapons. Now, a few minor issues aside, I still have to say that this is a very impressive piece. And I can definitely categorize it as a holy grail piece because in most places, it's already sold out and they're very hard to find. Unfortunately, they've gone on eBay, guys, and the secondary market has inflated the price. So if you can find one that's relatively cheap, you should grab it now because these are going to be very, very hard to find. Now, before I go, I just want to thank the folks over at Hobby Link Japan for sending these two wonderful pieces over for review. Alright everybody, so that's my official review on the VR052F 112th scale variable type stick, aka Scott Bernard, from Genesis Climber Moss Pita. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews.